Welcome to Race Face TV, everyone. We've got a great show lined up for you tonight. We have GMS racing driver Kaz Gralla, who drives in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series and is currently in the chase for the championship. But first, we're going to go out to our Race Face driver update. We're going to start off in the Midwest with Race Face driver Sam Mayer. He was back in the Midwest Truck Series at La Crosse Speedway in West Salem, Wisconsin. Since Sam won the last truck race there, he was inverted and had to start 10th. But when the green flag dropped, he got freight trained all the way back to 16th. Sam was hoping for a caution, but that never happened as all 25 laps went green. But he worked his way through the field and finished in fifth. What we say in racing is he may not have gotten the results he was looking for, but the performance was awesome. Up next for Sam, the U.S. Legends Nationals at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We're going to go out west now to Madeira Speedway where we find race face drivers Jesse Love and Adam Lemke. I was privileged to be at that race this weekend and witness some great racing in a variety of different classes, including quarter midgets, mini cup, modifieds, pro late models, and of course the junior late model series. I want to give a quick shout out to track owner Kenny Shepard who put on an amazing weekend of racing. Race face driver Adam Lemke was making his third start of the season in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series in his Nate Clower Motorsports number 98. Adam qualified seventh and was moving up through the field before getting involved in a racing incident that had him sent back to the back of the field, but he was able to work his way back to an eighth place finish. Up next for Adam, double duty at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in the, both the USAC Midgets and the Junior Late Models. Race face driver Jesse Love put on arguably his best display of driving in the championship race for the 5150 Junior Late Model Series, making passes high and low and surviving a late race caution that ended up in a green-white checkered finish to win the 75-lap season finale. In my opinion, this is how you end up a championship season, by going out and winning the last race, even when you had the championship all wrapped up before the race even started. Congratulations, Jesse, on your second championship of the year, and he still has two titles in sight. Up next for Jesse, he's also going to be at the USAC Midgets and Junior Late Models at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. One of our Race Face TV guests, Bakerfield's Buddy Shepard, claimed his third career late model championship and outlasted Eric Holmes to win the fifth $10,000 short track shootout in the season finale for the RPM Mortgage Pro Series at Madeira Speedway on Saturday night. Buddy led all 150 laps, but it wasn't easy. With several cautions in the last 20 laps, including another green-white checkered to end the race, Congratulations, buddy. Ryan Vargas was not racing this past weekend, but that didn't keep him out of the news. Ryan will be competing for the NASCAR Rev Racing Drive for Diversity Combine next week at New Smyrna Speedway, just outside of Daytona, Florida. So what does a race car driver do in preparation for a chance of a lifetime? He tests. So yesterday, Ryan was with Lee Falk Racing and Development and spent the day getting to know the legendary track while putting down some very impressive lap times. Good luck next week, Ryan. You deserve this opportunity, and the entire Race Face community is pulling for you. Well, there you have it. As always, the Race Face drivers were very busy. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be joined by 18-year-old NASCAR Camping World Truck Series driver, Kaz Gralla. I'm JDRF. I am JDRF. I'm JDRF because... I am JDRF. Because... Type 1 diabetes is hard. I am JDRF because I advocate. Because I am helping research progress. Because I am part of a community of hope. Because I believe we can find a cure. I'm JDRF because... Because I'm gonna beat this. Type 1 diabetes won't hold me back. We are, we are JDRF. <laughs> We are JDRF because we do big things. 
We, we are JDRF. JDRF. Because they're the ones at the front lines doing what we need. Every morning when I wake up, I am JDRF. I am JDRF because I want an artificial pancreas. Because I am the mother of a type one. Because I am a fighter. Because I believe in them. Because I want my kids to say they used to have diabetes. Because I want to help others. Because I believe we're all working together. Because together we can build a community. Helping to just raise awareness for type one diabetes. I am JDRF because I want to see a world where type one becomes type none diabetes. I am JDRF because I want to cure. Well, the 2017 racing season is about to come to an end, and I hope all of you had the successes that you had hoped for. Now it's time to focus on 2018. Yes, for the true racer, there is no downtime, and the real race is starting now. And that's the race for sponsorship dollars. Are you ready? If you're looking for a competitive edge, then I encourage you to check out Race Face University. This is an eight week online course that's geared to give you both a competitive advantage on and off the track. Go to racefaceuniversity.com, you'll be glad you did. Welcome back everyone. Before we go live to Kaz, I wanna take a quick moment to talk about a little bit about this young man's accomplishments. Number one, the youngest race winner ever at Daytona International Speedway, only 18 years old. Number two, the youngest pole winner in any of the top three divisions in NASCAR, and he did that at Daytona this year, 2017, and the youngest driver in the NASCAR playoffs. Um, Kaz, welcome to our show tonight. Thank you very much. I actually have yet to hear that. That's interesting. I am the youngest one in the playoffs, I guess. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's quite an accomplishment right now because, uh, as, as most people know, the sport's going through this major... Um, infusion of youth right now so th those are some pretty impressive stats and you know the cool thing about that is that all happened this year yeah it's it definitely started off as a really good year we hit some bad luck right in the middle uh and and had quite a few dnfs just seemed to be in the wrong place at the wrong time in a, in a bunch of races in a row uh but luckily our, our win at daytona secured us a spot in the playoffs and uh the, the last part of this season, including our two playoff races so far, I feel like we've we've really gotten stronger and, and started to have some some great runs, and uh, hopefully that's going to be enough to get us to the next round of the playoffs. Well, that's all it takes is a, a little bit of luck, basically, to, to get you there. It doesn't really, you know, I was talking to somebody this weekend um, out at Madera Speedway, and I said, does it really matter how you get there as long as you got there, and that's what you did, so you got there. But... I'm just, I was looking at some stats from you, and this goes back a little bit. Being the youngest in a, is, is kind of a, a pattern that we're seeing, because in 2013, you were the youngest winner ever at Hickory Motor Speedway. I don't know if you knew that stat or not, but I mean, gosh, Hickory is such a legendary track. And, and then also, you were the youngest driver to win, or to, to actually lead laps at, at the 400 at Myrtle Beach. And almost win it. That was a close one. We finished second that year. Um, but yeah, I've I've definitely got some some stats of being the youngest, which is cool. But um, you know, it, it, that all turns into just just trying to have the the results and the performance. And this year we've had that. We've been able to back it up, but we're still you know we've got five more races left this year in the trucks, and we're just focused on trying to get another win this year uh, or five more, however many we can get. Um, and, and definitely focus on looking forward and, and seeing what we can turn this all into. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the win at Daytona. I mean, it, that's, the, that's the pinnacle for every race car driver. I don't care what you're driving. I don't care if I had somebody tell me once that I didn't care if I was racing a big wheel. If I could win a race on a big wheel and I could win it at Daytona, that would be amazing. So talk a little bit about that what it was like, number one, to go down there and sit on the pole. And, and then, of course, I, I don't even know if words can describe what it must have been like to step out on top of that truck in Victory Circle. Well, it was an interesting weekend, to say the least. I mean, 
that you, you spend the whole off season in December and January thinking about the season starting. And for me, I hadn't raced on a track bigger than a mile and a quarter prior to that because I had just turned 18 during the off season. So I'm going into it knowing, oh boy, we got the first race of the year on arguably one of, if not the most intimidating tracks that NASCAR goes to. And I've got to do that to kick off the season after having not raced a truck in, you know, however many months, three months. Um, so that was probably the most stressed out I've ever been going into a weekend. And especially because GMS Racing has really, really strong super speedway trucks. Uh, obviously, Hendrick Power is really good under the hood. So I knew we'd be fast. And I was just hoping that I'd be able to learn quickly enough to figure out what to do with it. Because it's a sketchy situation to be up front there if you don't know exactly what you're doing. So um, I was uh, thrown into the wolves there starting on the pole, uh, hoping that I could hang on to it and, and do what I needed to do. And we had a pretty strong race, honestly. I think we finished, I just looked back at the numbers getting ready for Talladega this week. And I think we were fourth and second in the first and second stages there. Um, so we were able to keep ourselves up front and stay competitive which in the end is what turned out to be what, what was able to win the race because we were probably on track to finish about fourth or fifth had everything gone without any issues on that last lap. But we kept ourselves close enough to the front there to be able to capitalize on it if anything did go wrong. And, you know, as, as can probably be expected, it got pretty uh, hectic up front on the last lap. And uh, I was able to avoid it and be the first guy to do so. And, uh, that got me a win there, which was just huge for our season, huge for our playoffs, and huge for my career. Um, definitely a, a fun, fun weekend there. We're going to take just a moment, and we're going to take a look at that video right now of that exciting win at the 2017 Camping World Truck Centers race at Daytona. Coming to the green and two laps to go. Johnny Sauter on the outside, Kaz Brella inside. Sauter drops down in front of Gralla, and here comes Matt Crafton on the outside with help from Ben Rhodes. They got a good push on the outside. Crafton's even with Gralla. This is when Gralla's really got to watch out. Side drafting from Crafton, something that he's never felt before. Nice job by Sauter. He goes up high to block. He gets in the high groove in front of Crafton. Great move. He had to give up on his teammate right there. Look at Timothy Peters on the inside. Matt Crafton challenging for the lead on the outside. Crafton, the two-time series champion, has never won here at Daytona. He has a teammate behind him. That's Ben Rhodes. Two teammates behind him. He's only Make it three teammates behind him. 16 tries, only one top five finish for our champion, Matt Crafton. Can he hang on? He's got a big lead. Don't get out too far. The final lap, Crafton in the 88 in front. Johnny, Johnny Sauter, Sauter inside is three wide. Forced his way to the middle. Middle of three. You're middle of three. Come on, 13. You got a guy coming to you. Not over. Keep digging. They're crashing. Rose in the crafting. Damn. Crafting up and over. And Cass Gralla looks to me like will win this race. Huge crash at the end on the final lap. And Kaz Gralla, the youngest driver in the field, the youngest driver to win a pole award in NASCAR's Touring Series history. We'll have to wait and see NASCAR, but he sure looked like he was the one that emerged with a lead. The first across the finish line under the checkers and the yellow flag. All right, well, there you saw it. What an amazing finish. And I know that had to be almost, I, I don't want to say exhilarating during that finish, but when you got back to your hotel later that night and you watched that, could you really even comprehend what you were, you know, the position that you were in and really what was going on around you uh, that allowed you to be able to get right through the middle of that uh, pretty much unscathed? I didn't see that you even got touched in that incident. No, which is actually uh, huge. You would think, well, as long as you win, who who really cares what happens to the truck? What happens to the truck? Bring home just a steering wheel if you want, as long as you come home with the checkered flag. But 
Um, actually, for us in the truck series, since we have two super speedways during the year, Talladega this weekend is our second one. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty nice to have our truck intact and be able to just work on it, smooth on it, and try to improve it for Talladega rather than having to completely rebuild the truck and hope that it's as good. Um, obviously, we had a pretty good truck at Daytona, so we're we're lucky to be able to bring that back. But yeah, I, I'd say leaving the track that night, I, I don't think it had set in yet. And frankly, it's one of those things where you think if it ever happens, it's going to be huge and there's going to be some moment where it just sets in. But honestly, I don't think you really ever wrap your mind around it, or at least I haven't yet, because it, it just still seems like, did that really happen? You know, uh, is that real? Um, I don't think that that part of it will ever go away because winning at Daytona really is surreal. And I think that's just the way it's going to stay. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. And that's a good point, too, because I'm sure that as happy as you was winning that race, there was a lot of guys that, that worked in the fab shop and stuff back in the, at, at, the, uh, at the headquarters there at GMS was really excited that that truck came back all in one piece. So Talladega this weekend, uh, but... There was a, a race in between that I want to talk about, a little bit about, and that was the road race. Uh, I mean, I, I watched that thing live, and I'm like, man, you know, he's got this race in, in the bag, and, you know, the last corner, the last lap. Walk us through that just a little bit. Well, that, that was a tough pill to swallow. We, uh, we ran the entire first stage right on the leader's bumper in second place. Uh, that was Austin Sindrick leading, and... We were definitely a little bit quicker than he was, but uh, I probably would have had to push the issue and dive it in on him or, or move him out of the way to get it. And in stage one of the race, there, there just wasn't any need to to quite go that far and, and end up costing yourself later in the race. So yeah, I had to kind of take the smart approach and just keep the pressure on him and make sure he knows I'm there, but uh, just be patient. I'd be ready to get him later. Um, but on our green flag pit stops, his crew made a mistake and my crew executed perfectly. And that's uh, ultimately what was able to, to get us into back into the top five after pit stops. I think a few trucks had a different strategy call that got them ahead of us. But on one of the restarts, I passed them all back and got, got to the lead. Um, and at that point, the, the 19 truck, Cindric, was was buried back in the field more. Well, that opened him up for a different strategy than us, where he ended up actually pitting later in the race so that he had fresher tires than I had. And less track position, but fresher tires. And uh, I, I went and I led all of the last 20 laps until the very last lap where Cindric got to me with those fresher tires. Um, it took him a while to try to, to shave the lead down, but he finally uh, almost got there. He got within... I guess I'd call it striking distance. He got within three car lengths of me and uh, into the, the hardest braking corner of the track. Not the last corner, one of the corners right in the middle of the track, but it's the hardest braking corner there, kind of like the last corner at Sonoma, that type of thing. Um, and, and he just sailed it on in there and used me as his brakes and unfortunately turned us around. Luckily, we had stretched out so far ahead of the field that we still finished third, but um, obviously playoff points... Are, are huge in the playoffs, and that would have been five extra points for us and five fewer points for him, which if, if you look at the playoff grid right now, um, that put me above the cut line rather than below the cut line going into Talladega. So uh, they may seem like small details, just a, a random race there in the middle of the season, but um, it, that all makes a huge difference, and uh, it definitely would have helped us out uh, for him to have not done that, but at the same time, he's racing for a playoff position. I just uh, can't get behind the manner in which he did it. But um, for me, if you're gonna if you're gonna rub me, because rubbing is racing, if you're gonna do it, do it door to door, um, or maybe even bumper to bumper if you're on his bumper. But you can't drive in from three back and and wreck anybody because anybody can do that. Uh, that that's not showing that's not showcasing what you can do as a driver because anyone can just do that. Um, I, I'd like to, to be beaten fair and square, um, but m maybe someday he'll get the opportunity to, to beat me fair and square. Yeah, well, I would have to agree with you. And I know after the race was over, I was listening to the commentary between Kyle Busch and Jeff Burton and some of the other ones. And 
I mean, everybody had the same idea that that just wasn't right. So, you know what they say in racing, what comes around goes around. So, uh, so now you're gearing up for another big speedway race and really a big race for you to go down there and, and actually have to either win the race or run up front to be able to advance on into the playoffs. So how do you get ready for Talladega? Well, I mean, there there is so much that's in your control at Talladega, and and that's all the air. And so I've I've been studying up all the video that I can, notes from everyone I can gather them from. I've been sitting down in meetings with people who who have won speedway races, and and just trying to soak up all the information that I can. And uh, basically, you want to build a, a subconscious playbook because. In the moment, in the race, you have tenths of a second to, to decide what you're going to do to make decisions. And so what you just want to do is try to build as much experience in your head as you can so when you're faced with a situation, you hopefully make the right decision. Of course, the best way to do that is just straight-up experience. So uh, a guy like Johnny Sauter, who's been doing it for so many years and won speedway races, um, he's he's got a, a bigger experience playbook built up in his head than I do. So all I can do is is watch and learn and, and try to build that the, those notes in my head up uh, synthetically. So I, I've been doing that. But, of course, once you get into the race, it's all situational, and uh, you can be doing your absolute best, and something could go wrong around you, or uh, y you know something just doesn't fall your way, and, and all of a sudden that takes you out of the race or maybe out of contention to win. So there's, there's a lot that's going to be going on on Saturday, but... I'm just trying to control the, the few variables that I can control, and uh, those variables were enough at Daytona, and, and hopefully they can be enough or, or darn close for Talladega because you're right. We don't need to win. We want to win, but we can get through without winning, but it, it would take some help. We'd have to have uh, some of the other trucks in the playoffs have a not-so-great day and have us have uh, a really good day. So um, we're just giving it our best, and our best is our best. That's all we can do. Well, I think the good news is, is you're going to go down there, and now that you have that experience at Daytona, I think you're probably going to get a respect from a lot of drivers that maybe in Daytona was like, you know what, he's not been on this big track before. I'm not really sure whether or not we can draft with him or we want to push or get pushed. And I think that you proved that in Daytona. So I think you go down there uh, with a little bit different uh, opinion by all the rest of the drivers that are going like, you know what, he ran up front all day at Daytona. We can run with him here. And I think you're going to find out that you're going to have a lot more friends than maybe you did at the beginning of the year uh, when you ran at Daytona. I totally agree. And, and believe it or not, uh, it sounds like you know, but that goes a long way at these speedway races because it's all about working together. And you have to have guys that are willing to work with you. Uh, I do think that, that this season, I... If nothing else, you can say I've gained the respect of, of a lot of the other drivers, and I think that'll go a long way this weekend in Talladega. In addition to the fact that GMS Racing as a company really seems to do a, a great job at coordinating with their drivers and the drivers themselves. So, you know, we've all got a, a really good bond, so we work well together. Um, and we showed that at Daytona. And, and uh, of course, last year I wasn't in the super speedway races with GMS, but you could see it there, too. Uh, they were just very organized. So hopefully, uh, us teammates, we can we can execute together and, and work together and put ourselves up front for the end because that's all that we can do. But when it comes down to the last two laps, I think everybody in GMS would agree that at that point, you just race for the win. Uh, forget teammates, none of that. It's all about just going for that win. But none of us can go for the win if we're not all up front in the first place. So we have to get there first and then we can duke it out together absolutely so Kaz we're going to have to end up here so let me ask you what's your prediction for this weekend at Talladega my prediction uh I don't know about prediction because I think Talladega is pretty unpredictable um but I can tell you my my hope and my goal is that uh our truck is as fast as it was at Daytona which I I think it should be um and I hope we just have a clean race because you look at Talladega um every year there's guys that have anything but a clean race. So if we can just stay up front and stay out of trouble, hopefully we can have that clean race we need to be able to battle for the win at the end. And, and then at that point, it's all in my hands. So uh, I'm hoping to be able to do that. Predictions? I, I wish I could tell you. If you know anyone that can predict it, let me know. Maybe they can help me out. Well, here's my prediction. 
My prediction is if you take it to Victory Circle, then you come back on our show later this, later this year, and we'll talk about that we, that we nailed it. How about that? <laughs> that sounds like a great plan. All Let's right. Well, it. Cass, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, all the luck this weekend. We're going to be watching you, and uh, we hope to see you in Victory Lane. And if not, finish in that top two or three so that you can advance on to the playoffs. So, again, thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you, guys. Well, there you have it. Thanks for being on the show, Kaz. Good luck in Talladega this weekend. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. And as we always say with every show, make sure to go out and support local racing in your community. And don't forget to go out and like our Facebook page. We'll see all of you back here next week.